What a week, what a week. Been a crazy week ahead. We got a crazy day ahead. Amazing baseball slates all around. Uh, as I speak, I am currently on the clock right now with my last two daytime diamonds. But man, we got so much to talk about. We got the A's move to talk about. We got all these arm injuries in the big leagues to talk about. We had WrestleMania last night. I'm I'm addicted to wrestling again. I'm back. Um, Nez and I are going to a Mavs game together on Friday. I'm making a little trip down to Dallas. There are tons of stuff happening, but most importantly, Wednesday, 100 days, smoke-free, equals 100K, rake-free on the platform of the people with our guy T-Box. So the official T-Box contest for the um, NBA slate will be up on Wednesday, and T-Box will be joining us on Off and on the Clock for that one. And yeah, I don't know, Nez. What is this? Some eclipse stuff going on. What else we got going on, man? Crazy stuff. Big, big, big day. Big eclipse day uh, today. It, we we had totality about an hour and twenty minutes ago. I'm still I'm still in awe of what I saw. It was awesome. Uh, I don't know if you guys follow Rudman on Twitter um, and like just keep up with his posts. He's a, he's such a good follow because like okay. when you follow Rudman you start to like get a feel for like who he is as a person. And like, when you hear him on podcasts as well, like this guy doesn't eat vegetables. He follows the Patriots religiously. He just has a lot of like very funny, like strong opinions. And the most Rudman thing that I've like ever read today was like, saw the eclipse before. Wasn't impressed. It's a black hole in the sky. Like, let's move on. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was like so matter of fact, yeah. so straight to the point. So matter of fact, I love that. It, but like, it was incredible, dude. It was incredible. And this isn't even my first eclipse. I saw one in 2017 in Kansas City, but like it was supposedly in totality. That was nothing to what I saw today. Today was just like it, it was so cool, man. It was you can't can't overstate how cool it was. Uh, but so, okay, what's the vibe? What's the vibe? Did you have like the glasses and the get up and stuff? Definitely, I had the glasses before totality hit, like because I mean it's really bright. Like, you know, people laugh and joke like, oh, you know, looking at the eclipse without glasses. Like you can't look at, at this thing without without some sort of like protection over your eyes. It is just simply too bright. But in, but when it's totality, you can't see unless you are looking without protection and it's safe to. Um, right. You know, pe people I mean, that's not that's not just from me. I've seen I've, I, I looked up plenty, plenty of sources that, that tell me you can look when it's in totality. And and, and so I did. And uh, it, it was it was so cool. We were like on our balcony, like yelling about it. Like we we're like, Woo! like yelling like we've got my little like niece here. She's like, yeah, it was it was really cool, man. I, I was geeking. Okay. It, I was. Geeking OK, out. OK. I, I mean, I, I don't go outside, Nez. I just draft teams on underdog. So I, I didn't venture You're Mr. Outside Touch teams. Grass. What are you talking about? You're the. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you're, let's, I got, you got the rake back statements to prove it, man. You're just always out here just like seeing the most beautiful bodies of water, just like all the trees <laughs> around you all the time. It's okay. You, we're going to we're, we're, we're gonna get you right. We're going to get you right. Oh, that's funny. Um, let's, uh, you know what? Just to help me out right now. Mm -hmm. I got my last two. Let's let the people in on what's going on behind the curtain right here. I got my last two daytime diamonds going, Nez. Um, did you get in the daytime diamond streets here? Did I, buddy? We were you, halfway max last night. <laughs> what are you talking oh about? My God. You got what are you talking about? It, I saw your morning stream. You did a good job. Yep. Uh, very, very, very good stuff. Uh, he's do not draft India. I don't know if you're doing that just to show. Um, yeah. Yeah, he got so that, yeah, he got hurt. So that's a new development. He got hurt during BP. So that's what's changed by uh, between members only stream and our stream right now is Jonathan India. Uh, what do we think the fallout of that is? Mm, I mean, who? I don't even know who's next man up there. To be honest, uh, apparently he's back on the field according to Numi. Uh, okay, interesting. Oh, you got to get your your lefty killer. I got to get. I got it. We got to go. And Sayo Garcia, guys. let's go. You or me, baby. I'll tell you what. <laughs> let's. We 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 got to start scrolling here. So these but, are my last yeah. two. I Judge Torres, Willie Adamas team thus mm -hmm. far. Um, we got that Milwaukee lineup right as we were going live here. I don't know how to spell <laughs> Milwaukee apparently. 
<laughs> Love watching. You hitting oh, five. That I mean, where where a hitter like Freelich should be hitting, right? Middle of the order, five hole hitter for Sal Freelich. Oh. Just that that type of profile. What is that? Yeah, that 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 one I don't agree with. I thought he might be leading off today, but hmm, that's interesting. I, I see people who seem to think uh, Reese Olson is gonna, you know, save them today if they if they punt on pitcher. I got bad news for him. Yeah, if I was putting on pitcher, I think I would have gone the the Ashcraft route before I went the Reese Olson one. That that I I took Reese Olson in this draft. That's the first time I've taken him today, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, you, none of those pitchers, when you are the last one to draft a pitcher, feel good. You know, so like, mm -hmm. I'm obviously it's tongue in cheek. I'm a pirate sky. <laughs> we, we, we all know this. I don't need to explain the joke. But uh, yeah, I, I think Ashcraft does have like that, like boomer bust that, you know, at that point, like that's kind of like what you're looking for. Cause, you know, if he has the chance to give you double digit points, not bad. Ooh, no Will Brennan today. Yeah, no Will Brennan in the middle of that order. Um, sorry, this I kind of derailed the show a little bit. I inter I intercepted here by uh, finishing my last two because I wanted to make sure I got the twenty five in. Got to, you got to. We, we are. I know that the timer is on. We've got forty minutes left, and it is uh, seventy five percent full. So that's a pretty good benchmark. Uh, looks mm. like that that will fill. That was that was awesome. Uh, to to have this like later start time. Uh, I mean, yeah. obviously, it's just like based on the scheduling, but to do a 20K daytime diamond is awesome. I hope that, you know, the uh, the, the mains can can fill as well. But this is uh, this is, you know, a really good size for for the old daytime diamond there. Yeah, very much so. And I, I said something on the private one, but Numi assures me that uh, he's got the back end info in it because I was like, whoa, 4,500, but only 25 max. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, I don't know if we can get there, but Numi's confident that uh, that we got the player pool to do so with no NBA today. So in Numi, we trust around here. Yeah, um, he's got it. I think I'm going to go ahead and take Ashby with this one because it's a Milwaukee stack and I'm going to push the plane. And we could talk about anything and everything that took place over the weekend and jump into today's slate. Um, NES National Championship tonight, Purdue versus UConn. We had the Women's National Championship yesterday. Katie Clark did not pull it out. Caitlin Clark there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't have a lean tonight. Do you have a dog in the fight? Do you have a lean tonight? I don't, man. I am so like right, not segment. tapped in. Perfect. I'm so yeah. not tapped in with uh, men's men's basketball. It, it's so funny that like I know just as much as I knew for the most part, like in years and years past. But mm -hmm. in years past, working in an office and like being in college and in high school, like you know everybody, all the dudes are are, are doing brackets and stuff. And it was like I thought that I knew things back then. You know, like right. and I know yeah. just as much now, like now I just know that I don't know anything about <laughs> that stuff. And like back then, I'm like, no, like, like this is like, like thinking that like I had it figured out back then for whatever yeah, reason is like cracks me up. Purely just picking school names, like anecdotally, com like no research whatsoever. Yeah, just like Duke, UNC, like absolutely yeah. pit. That's, pit a, that's good basketball Sweet school. 16. Yeah, like, like no question. You can't pick this guy. They, they you know, look at their record. Like, how, how can you not pick? Like, so it just... <laughs> I didn't know anything, but uh, I guess I guess UConn, you know, mm -hmm. UConn just a blue blood school. Can you say that? Is that is that is that the thing? Yeah, Are they blue blood. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of weird that like UConn is so good at basketball, like at at like men and women's, just I, forever, just always good. I saw something today: sixteen national championships between men and women in the last thirty years. That's crazy. That's nuts. Mm -hmm. Like that's basketball, you right there. Like that's that's crazy. Yeah, you yeah, think like Connecticut to be that right, right, hot right. Thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's two kind of like guys. Like I mean, us as NBA guys and NBA daily guys. I think there's two guys that are like fringe top ten, fringe lotto guys in the game. The seven foot four center from Purdue, Edie. Um, yeah, Edie. And then um, Castle is the other one for UConn. So I think those are kind of like the two names that we're going to want to get familiarized with before our NBA dailies next year kind of thing. I'm going to watch the game and then mm -hmm. like learn these names for the first time and then like get totally <laughs> tied to these priors 
come <laughs> NBA season. That is what will happen. You will hear me next year, next season, talk up a guy that is like in a spot to get minutes. And I'm like, some of the national championship, he looked pretty good. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna have about 40% of this guy. No, no question. Tonight, the, tonight is the, the equivalent blazer. of making all your Michael Penix uh and yes. Roma Tuesday takes in like one game. Like, it's oh, exactly- we're watching the natty. It's exactly what happened with with Michael Penix, and I stand by it. I still think he's going to be good. I don't care. Yeah. I saw I saw glimpses. I don't care. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about. Um. Did you watch WrestleMania last night? Former it- former wrestling nut, like as a kid, okay. religiously yeah, watched it. Um. I heard very positive things. I saw a lot of, you know, finger like like finger pointed up emojis. Is this for like Roman Reigns? Is is this what? Yeah, Roman that's Reigns the does? that's the acknowledge acknowledge me bloodline thing. In my neck of the woods, this is this is a sketch emoji. What's up, brother? That's what. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I know um, this from. That's funny. I uh, I watched WrestleMania for the first time in like 15 years last night, and I watched kind of just like the last hour of it, and I I found it amazing. Like I was like, this is awesome. Like Nikki just didn't get it. I watched it with some buddies and stuff. It was it was pretty good though. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk baseball from the weekend. Though as we push into this slate, obviously we we lost Yuri Perez, we lost uh, Bieber, Shane Bieber, and we lost probably lost Spencer Strider. Though he's seeking second opinion, blah blah blah. Right now, it's become I don't know. It's definitely abnormal, but it's like is just this the new direction of baseball, Nez, where it's like we're treating every pitcher as if they're a relief pitcher. Come out here, throw as hard as you can, spin it as fast as you can. There's so much emphasis on all these metrics that now all of a sudden this is just the new normal. Or is this a huge anomaly where it's like these pitchers are getting hurt, you know, just, I don't know. We blamed uh, World Baseball Classic last year. But like, is is this byproduct of sticky stuff? Is it byproduct of pitch clock? Is it byproduct of the way we pitch now? What do you think just like macro of of the situation? I think potentially a little bit of like, you know, a little bit of pitch clock, a little bit of sticky stuff. um, You know, it it very well could be playing a part. I kind of wrote about it today in in my, in my post on, uh, on Nez takes and like, I think it's just like this catch. It's a byproduct of the catch 22 of being a pitcher in today's environment where, Mm -hmm. you know, the answers to the test that leads you to getting paid, which is you have to throw it very hard. You need to throw it hard. Mm -hmm. Like that is like the, it's a stuff plus league and, uh, and you know how teams are evaluating free agents to give them the money that, you know, that, that you want. And so it leads to, a style of pitching that th- that just puts a ton of stress on the elbow. And like, you know, we we're still figuring this stuff out. Like we always think that like we have it figured out at this, at whatever moment in time we're talking about it mm-hmm. 20, you know, 15 years ago, it, w- it was the breaking balls. Like the breaking balls are bad for the elbow. And it's like, not really. Like, like that is like, <laughs> you know, like when, when biomechan like they, they do studies and like biomechanically the stress on the elbow from a curveball is like, not that big of a deal. But like growing up when like you got little leaguers throwing curveballs, you're like, Oh, you shouldn't be doing that at that age. And it's like, no, you actually just shouldn't be like throwing 110 pitches, like back to back days. And just like, mm-hmm. it's just like overall stress. And I mean, it's, you're never going to not have pitching injuries. It's just right. I, I don't know. I'm not normally like the data like nerd guy, but like I think it's just like variance. And because it's happening to the stars and it's happening early, you know, it just like it just feels worse than ever. At the same time, pitchers are doing things, you know, pitching in, in a way that is stressful on the arm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what you do. Like, like ultimately, guys are never going to like tone it down, you mm-hmm. know, like it's just like what you have to do to be successful. So it's it's just like the catch 22 is the best way I can describe it. Like you're damned if you do damned if you don't. Okay. Some solve metrics that don't necessarily come from me, but I've been listening and paying attention to and whatnot. Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer talked about incentivizing pitchers, starting pitchers to pitch deeper in ball games because Verlander is kind of like the poster child for 
he didn't throw max effort at all times. Right. And now these guys coming up are max effort, max strikeouts. There's so much emphasis on getting whiffs because as you alluded to, you get paid when you throw hard, you get paid when you get whiffs, like that kind of thing. Right. So do you think there is, you know, metrics that could be put in place where you leave the pitch clock in, but you allow sticky stuff based on Tyler Glasnow's comments, or you tie the DH to the starting pitcher so that it incentivizes guys to go longer into games. Do you think those are good solve metrics, or do you think those are just kind of like band-aids on a problem that doesn't really exist? I'm not going to say that they're bad. They're not what I would do personally. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's a, I mean, like Verlander, like you said, it's like the poster child for pitching like that. You know, not everybody has like the stuff to like not do max velo like at all times. You know, some guys just have to go right. full bore. Um, you know, I do wonder if eventually you'll see guys like doing that though. Like, and then maybe when they get, you know, two strike counts, now they like really start to like amp up the velo because it's just like a pressure situation. You want to get an out. You'll do that there. Um, I guess as far as like answers. Mm-hmm. My opinion, which like is not going to be like a very popular one, is to deaden the balls a little bit. Okay. And if you deaden the balls a little bit, you allow pitchers to not have to be overpowering. And like you, you cut down on K's. If 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 in theory it was like, hey guys, the balls are deadened a little bit. There's going to be less home runs, so you're going to get crushed a lot less. So it's like, okay, I can afford to allow more balls in play as a right. pitcher because I am less likely to get, you know, get crushed for it. Um, and I'm not over relying on whiffs because I can put the ball in play with better hope that it won't leave the yard. I think that kind of has like a way of like working things out. If you punish pitchers less for getting hit, I don't okay. know. Just something no, I think you're like thinking about. No, I think you're definitely right in that, the, in that. And um, uh, that's something that glass now alluded to when he was talking about it before his TJ back in the day was like, he almost predicted his own arm injury, right? Like, I don't know if you've seen the clips and stuff, but he's like, as soon as they took away the sticky stuff and he wasn't like a spider tack guy, he was just a sunscreen and rosin guy. Yeah. And as soon as they took that away and he had to, you know, grip the ball deeper in his hand and blah, blah, blah. And then they changed the baseball in 2016. I think it was, it was like, man, all we do now is throw for whiffs. And the only way we could throw for whiffs, is if we have like a little bit of that sticky stuff or else we're putting so much stress on our arm all the time to get whiffs, right? Because, you know, you you, you pitch in Yankee Stadium, for instance, right? Like, I, I don't think there's maybe, maybe it's too far of a, 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 a narrative for me to spin, but I don't think it's there's a grand disconnect between Carlos Rodon and Garrett Cole getting hurt when they pitch in Yankee Stadium when literally every single fly ball that goes to right field basically leaves the yard when you throw 96 plus, right? So it's like deadening the balls. We lose some of the three true outcomes of this new generation, which is not a bad thing. You know, like let's get back to like a little bit of old school baseball with, with the steals, the balls and plays, the hit and runs yeah. and that the thing. Right. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I, I kind of like that. Yeah. And, and, and- I heard so I follow this one guy too. His name is Mario. I forget his like actual um account, but he's just like in the mo I, I would describe him as like a based thinker. Like he just like thinks in ways other people don't. And like it's like it, it's kind of cool. And one of the things that he had suggested, and, and I don't like vibe with this, I'm just like throwing out another thing, was like he actually he thinks that <laughs> if you hamstring the the rosters by not allowing so many relievers on okay. a team you then force teams to adapt to say okay we have like we have less pitch so how do we get through this pitching mm-hmm. you have to pitch safer but by pitching safer you know you're pitching less effective and then that's going to lead to more runs you know most likely because you're right. not pitching yeah. at your best ability but like that's like one of his like things and he's just like one a, a, a good follow for like uh I don't even like, like, off, outside like, like the different. box thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very yeah. outside the box style thinking. So, I mean, it, 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 I think, you know, I don't think they got to push the panic button, but it's definitely a problem that they should be thinking about solving. And mm-hmm. I'm sure they are, but yeah, if not, they should be. 
I, yeah, I mean, like, it, it's interesting because, like, you go back in the past and, like, you think about, like, you know, guys like Nolan Ryan and stuff. Like, obviously, he was, like, one of the most extreme outliers of all time. But, like, he threw hard as fuck and got tons of strikeouts and still managed to stay healthy for 20-plus years and, you know, 300-plus innings multiple times. Like, what's changed? What's changed since then? I think he's just like, like you said, I think he's just like an anomaly. He was just such an anomaly. You know, like yeah. I'm sure if I did some research, I could like show you guys in his era that have torn their UCLs. Right. And yeah. You don't hear about them because a torn UCL ended your career back then. That's a yeah, good point. That's it. There was no, yeah. there was no coming back from that. Like you blew your arm out. You better learn how to hit because you can't, you, you, you're not using that arm to throw anymore. Um, I know Carlos is joking here saying baseball needs the sauce. That's going to get guys hurt. That gets guys hurt. If yeah. You give them the sauce. They're mu- like, that goes to the skeletal muscle that doesn't go to the tendons. So like your muscles mm-hmm. are stronger than the tendons. And like, you know, you see a lot of injuries in football and like, you know, right. I mean, yeah, the turf is a problem, but like these guys are too strong for their bodies, <laughs> you know? So like, mm-hmm. there's no, there's no perfect, perfect answer here. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, I don't know where I come out on, like, the, the other side of the spectrum is, like, the the elimination of starting pitching, <laughs> like, where it's, like, you have more pitchers on a roster and your starter is, like, three innings instead of six and, like, that sort of thing. I don't know. And everyone throws max effort. Everyone throws max spin, but they only pitch one inning. I don't know. That's probably bad for the game, too. I know. I, I think like, I don't want to get, you know, like, like starters going deep into games is awesome. And, and, you know, how did they, how did they do that? You know, before, um, what was, what was the difference mm-hmm. back in, in the day? And I mean, they didn't throw as hard. They threw yeah. hard. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe you guys are pitching too much now. Because, like, back in the day, like, I can't imagine they had, like, scheduled, like, workout and regiment programs like Driveline. Like, we rave about, like, Shane Bieber went to Driveline and he worked so hard and he added two miles per hour. Like, is there any correlation between doing that and getting hurt two starts into the year? Right. Right? Like, maybe he A lot of people do have some problems with three months. Yeah, a lot of people do have some problems with like what drive line does. And like I don't have an opinion on it, but I know there's a lot of people that like don't love throwing with weighted baseballs. There's people right. that, that think that that's like problematic and you know is like way too stressful on the mm-hmm. arm. I'm I mean, like I have no expert opinion on that. Uh I mean if I yeah. was to force to give one, I would say that throwing with weighted balls is is fine. Um Yeah, but- I know Chapman and Otani are like two of the big bulls for that. Like bear uh like um bull case for those weighted balls. Yeah, like I, I think that that if done appropriately, like like obviously you shouldn't throw with a weighted ball full strength, but like right. you it's it's a way of exercising those muscles, those exact muscles that you use to do the motion that you're trying to do with a way that stresses the muscle and strengthens those exact muscles that you want to use. So like I've no that's the way that I look at it, just like my 500 point you but Mm -hmm. um, i like this point from chip here it's interesting to see how much pitch counts tracked in game but how little it seems to be tracked outside of it the other one would be like the way in which they track innings like not all innings are created equal right all pitches are created equal right hmm yeah i I mean yeah i i I mean he he says that but like trust me these pitchers they know how many pitches they are throwing outside of baseball games right I, they're, they're not just they're not yeah. just like chucking that shit like they are very very <laughs> well, very Chris very Flexen is but everybody else <laughs> <laughs> only the only the chads are uh but yeah. no these these guys are like these guys are insanely insanely strict and regimented with with their with their throwing programs mm-hmm. like i said man i don't think it's i don't think it's avoidable but it's um you yeah. know it, it really it brings sucks. up a good yeah, Billy brings up a good point here that it's like it's way easier to quantify good pitching prospects and like whatever in small sample with stuff metrics, right? So what you have is you have a kid in high school that is like, 
hey, the only way I'm going to get to a D1 college or the only one I'm gonna, way I'm going to get drafted is throw hard as fuck and spin hard as fuck. So he starts doing that at a younger age to, to put quantifiable numbers up, right? And then all of a sudden, oh, look at this guy. He's, he's, a, he's a freak. They don't look at the fact because... If, if, if you look at a kid in high school and he had like three no hitters and he, and he did all this stuff, people will find bear cases of like, Hey, look at who he was pitching against. Look at the division he played in. Look at how poor the high schools were around him. Like, you know what I mean? Like they'll, they'll shit all over that. But then if you see velo and spin rate, people will be like, I don't care about the results. Give me the kid with the velo and spin sprint, uh, spin rate and the big frame. And it's kind of like, well, maybe we got to kind of go back to the original and like who's good at pitching in baseball games because if you put so much stress on your arm that early and it's just like this trickle-down effect of like emphasis on that year over year over year until you finally get paid as you alluded to, like, I don't know, maybe kids are just starting way too young, way too aggressively like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, there you go. Blake's got it. Analytics are ruining baseball. Here we go. Yeah, that, that's the take. That is that is the take. <laughs> get that. Get us back to batting average and ERA. Those are the only two stats I need to know about about baseball players. <laughs> what's their average um, and what's their ERA? Yeah, Jordan saying it was Sal, Sal Freelich day in the daytime diamond. That scares me a little bit because I was. Uh, I was going some other ways than than Sal Freelich, and I and I even thought Sal Freelich would be leading off today. The fact that he's hitting five, I I don't know. I'm not sure that yeah, it's Livy Dunn season. Yeah, you think so, huh? Livy Dunn's been crushing. Yeah, righty killer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Right. Like uh, yeah, twenty fantasy points yesterday or the day before. Yeah, and then like, like and yeah, I mean he had twenty in like three, two separate games in the last like three days or something. He's been, yeah, he's been playing well. Uh, yeah, I'm rookie. excited for this game. You mentioned it. Like the weather's really nice in Cincinnati mm-hmm. today. Ball should be flying. I didn't think ADP reflected the, the pitchers at great American ballpark and the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's jump in the slate. Should we start, uh, Weather and Nez takes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not too much weather going on today, Good, thankfully. Um, mm-hmm. It might rain in, in Minneapolis. And, like, I swear – and I know the slate's loaded, but, like, people are definitely scared of, like, drafting Dodgers, which is, like, I think very funny. Just in general because of the uh, weather concerns or they're scared of Bailey over or they just like other spots more? Well, it's a loaded slate. There's a lot of good spots to get to, but I think like they see the yellow and, Mm -hmm. you know, I have a team with Otani, Betts and Freeman on it. Like it's just. Yeah, that hasn't happened once this year. Yeah, like that's not It's the first time that we are able to do that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Your top stacks, favorite pitchers and such, as you alluded to, people passing on Dodgers a little bit because of weather and just a little bit further down in terms of the spot comparative to some of the others. Uh, walk me through favorite stacks. Nez. Yeah. So I, uh, admittedly, uh, omitted the Mets like accidentally. Um, I, I think, <laughs> I think the Mets are, are definitely in consideration, uh, here, especially cause they go like highly undrafted. Um, so okay. I think undrafted Mets are always a fun team to to stack up. So let me just throw that out there. Um, it's it, I think today is a really fun day to get off the chalk because I think this is such a chalky day. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of like outlined it where like, all right, we have the D-backs, top six bats go there. The Braves, top six bats go there. The Dodgers, top five bats go. Like that leaves us with like 15 spots left or or 13 spots left to draft bats. And then you have the Mm -hmm. Astros. All the Astros are going. Now we have no Fromber. Like throw the Rangers in like some of the in these favorite stacks here. Um, Even though like I'm not sure. Like I think we might get like a strange Rangers lineup just because it's like a you know the last day of the series. Uh, You know, so I do want to see like they start doing that now with these Mondays. Mm-hmm. Like traditionally but, speaking, theories would always end 
on a Sunday and then yeah. if Monday would be an off day or whatever. There are some trickle over carryover ones on non holiday Mondays now where series do carry four games despite the, the way the calendar breaks. Yeah. So I, w- I, w- I am interested in seeing which Rangers are out or are, are going to be on the field because that'll be a fun team to stack up because like the chalk is, is chalking really hard, but I'm surprised more okay. people aren't getting to the Phillies today, which like has me like pretty excited. Like I okay, thought that cool. they were going to be far and away one of the higher drafted teams. And I mean, like Schwerber and Harper just free for you against miles. Michaelis, who like, I, I have no strikes, zero fear in my heart. I know it's right. Yeah. Nervous, but. Well, strike zero p- fear in your heart. Cause he strikes zero people out. But, um, yeah, he's a uh, he's a professional pitcher, as we like to say around here. Nez, you know, he'd be he'd be one of those guys who would be very ben- beneficial beneficiary. He'd be a big beneficiary of the dead ball if uh, if they uh, he would things up. Uh, we got uh, yeah, Rangers lineups already out. Nothing funky. Uh, same top five as we've seen the last couple of days, and Smith and Walsh flip spots. In that six and seven hold, that's about it. Um, Cassianas home run flow chart from Clay. We're going flow chart on MLB now too. I love it. Eclipse day for Castellanos. I like it. <laughs> Galaxy brain there. Oh we love man. It. Um, Numi boots on the ground. He's going to the game today. He thinks there should be at least six innings before rain concerns. I think so they're going to be fine. Okay, there's your boots on the ground in um, Minnesota. Take there. Uh, we just got Phillies lineup as well. Uh, Schwarber, Turner, Harper, Boehm. Uh, no JT Raumuto today. Uh, day off for the catcher. We got Stubbs in the eight hole instead. So if you are going to go that route, as you alluded to, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I just like that top three quite a bit. Okay, sounds good to me. Um, any love for the other side of Coors? We saw Coors fall on its face uh, two out of three days. Um, it salvaged and got home. It was actually very strange. The two the two days, the Friday, it looked like it was going to flop on its face. And then for whatever reason, they traded like nine runs <laughs> in the last final four outs. Uh, and then something very similar happened on Saturday. But Given the way runs were scored on the slate from other environments, Coors basically didn't matter the first three games of the season. And Loki love to see it. I don't know. Like I was kind of playing the chalk a little bit with the Rays there, but uh, you know, never Coors is always your your path to success. Um, is today a never Coors day? Nez, can we can we get away from these right-handed D backs with uh, plenty of lefty killers in Ketel Marte, uh, Lourdes Gurriel, even Randall Gritchick to an extent, lefty killer, and uh, Christian Walker. Can we get away from chalky d backs today, bud? You're just lucky that Kevin Newman isn't in the player pool because I'd be uh, <laughs> adding him to the to the list as well. Low-key lefty killer. Dude, Kevin Newman in Coors Field is a problem. That's like <laughs> where he's like, he's meant to be at Coors Field. I can't believe they never signed him. Um Remember playing him in Great American Small Park multiple times last year when he'd lead off for the Pirates? Yeah. Or was that two years no, ago? He was, no, it would be two years ago because last year two he years. was on the Reds. Yeah. So it was – yeah, before Ellie got called up last year mm-hmm. and he would be playing like some shortstop and then they'd face a lefty and he'd move to the top of the order instead of India. And then the year before that, Pirates at Great American and then he would randomly lead off against a lefty in Great American. So glad I don't have to relive those days anymore. Oh um, my god! Bring the, them back. No, uh, I mean, man, the, the D backs, <sighs> buddy, buddy, they're gonna they're gonna destroy our <laughs> friend friend. Uh, you know, friend of the show by proxy, uh, Kyle Freeland. Unfortunately, um, you know, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Have you seen his ERA? It's like twenty seven, right? I think it's higher. It threw two 45? starts. I think it's like 30 something. Yeah. Oh man. It's, 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 it's upsetting. It's really upsetting. It like, you know, I'm sure he's not mad. He's getting paid every time he's on the field. So he just like, here we go. Like living my dream. I, you know, always <laughs> want to be a major league pitcher. Uh, this is like, this is, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare for him. Um, I mean, 
I, I don't think these D backs go high enough. Like we should be giving them like the Celtics in the dance treatment, you know, like mm. Gabby Moreno should not be available in the third round. You need, we need all of these diamond backs. This is going to, uh, this is, this is going to be, it's going to be ugly, man. All right. I'm about it. Like Christian um, Walker should be like pick two or I don't know, three at least like you got Acuna. Um, yeah, man, this is, yeah, this is going to get ugly. Blaze had a nice stretch last, uh, a week, week and a bit ago where he was hitting at near the top of that lineup too. So like, you know, just because he's at the bottom right now and he, he's not as hot as he was, he was, uh, he was doing some damage, uh, versus Colorado in Arizona, uh, two series ago there. Um, okay, cool. Uh, decently exciting pitching slate. Nez, we got the debut of Blake Snell. Yeah. He is SP1 today. Um, I low-key don't think he's my SP1, though. I I, I kind of think... I, I, I mean, he's been doing the side work. He's been doing the simulated game thing. He's been doing all this sort of deal. I think they want to protect their investment. I think... They, they know what they're getting into. They want to be a contending team with all the acquisitions and stuff that they made recently. I, I think there's probably a pretty hard cap on Blake Snell of five uh, innings pitched, and he's a guy who throws a lot of pitches because he strikes a lot of dudes out and he walks a lot of dudes. And that's a tough combination when you have like a soft innings cap on a dude. Um, I, I, I mean, Blake Snell would have to be incredibly efficient, and he's not that guy but he would have to be incredibly efficient versus the Nationals to go six innings today. And the quality start in the win means so, so much on our platform for that bonus five points. Um, I think we'd be hard pressed to see more than like four innings with seven Ks or something like that from him today. I I'm going the least Castillo route. I am going a little bit of the U Darvish route. I'd be going even Zach Gallen at Coors to an extent uh, would be a little bit better. For me, I think. And then, uh, yeah, what do you think? Just with the Snell take. It's, it's, I don't want to, you know what? We're on a show. Let's, let, let, let's get, I mean, this is, this is a, this is the worst ADP on the slate. This is one of the worst ADPs I think we will see like all season. It just makes no sense. It makes no sense. And like, then you have Gallon right below him. And I know the Rockies suck, but like mm -hmm. Gallon right below him is hilarious. When you have Eflin, Darvish, Castillo, no more Valdez, Morton, yeah. Barrios. Like you have five pitchers that I would take in a vacuum over the top two pitchers. And people are using picks in their drafts to take Snell or Gallon mm -hmm. instead of just like waiting for one of those five that I think are better and cheaper. It just like, man. I, I love today's slate because like the I, I feel perfectly fine getting either Barrios Castillo or Darvish at pitcher mm -hmm. or, you know, even I can continue to go on from there. And there's just so many like fun teams like this. This main slate is awesome. And if you're if you're watching and you're coming from NBA, you can auto today. You can mm -hmm. auto today like you, okay. you can't just like get like, like get a mishmash of Braves, get a mishmash of D-backs and Dodgers um, queue them up, push the plane, have at it. Uh, yeah, I, I I can't argue with that one. Um, one thing you just glossed over in that when you were you were talking and we were talking, but we haven't openly said yet, and Underdog still hasn't tweeted it, which is kind of surprising to me. Is uh, Brammer's not going to pitch today? Brammer, they're they're making a call up. Um, he's been scratched from that start, but we don't have anything like official official uh from that right uh let's Still double nothing. check so yeah i'm refreshing the underdog I don't thing know who the hell the astros locker is but he um he says that he can confirm that frommer is not starting ari alexander who uh -huh. is a reporter um for uh yeah yeah for houston He's got a blue check, 7K followers, followed by other Houston accounts. He's saying that Blair Henley, who is a right-handed pitcher, will start tonight in place of Fromber. Multiple sources tell KPRC2. So, um, I mean, they're gonna—they're probably gonna wait for like the official 
notice like before they make the actual like designation but i was really surprised that that we didn't like i i only knew it because of brad in the discord as an astros guy okay so changes quite a bit because um it, it makes you want to get to right-handed bats instead of left-handed bats from um the rangers or sorry left-handed bats instead of yeah I said that backwards, but you know what I mean? Because we're going to flip the handedness of the starter there. And then we're at a, um, we're at a point where Texas is low key mispriced. They are. It's a very fun time to start drafting, uh, to start drafting the Texas Rangers because okay, no Fromber is a big deal. Yeah, no, very much so. Yeah. Good, good shout there. So contrarian stacks right now for me, in my mind, that, that we're kind of both feeling and and whatever. You were alluded to the Mets uh, earlier. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm all the way there yet, but uh, I'll entertain it. I'll entertain it. I am a Charlie Morton apologist. I think he does pitch pitch pretty well, but I could I could get there. Okay. Uh, Rangers for sure. Rangers makes a lot of sense right now, just in strength of lineup and the position right now. I want to get and this might just be my inherent biases and whatever. Give me these damn right-handed rays. Get them out of Coors Field, man. We don't need them in Coors Field. We want to hit tanks. Get them out of here. Let's let's put them against Tyler Anderson. I want some right-handed rays. I want some Yanni Diaz. I want some hit and herald. I want some of that like top of the top of the order stuff from those right-handed rays that everybody is sick of drafting after they let them down for three straight days. Uh, I'm going to some rays today. What do you think about that? Oh yeah. Love it. I mean, Randy, Yandi, and and Paredes uh, are are awesome today. Throwing your boy Hitting Harold too. Um, it, it it's it's a fun slate, man. Uh, yeah. It, I I I think that the Rays are going really overlooked against Tyler Anderson, who isn't like that bad. But I want right-handed Rays against Tyler Anderson, no question. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like Tyler Anderson, high strikeout guy. He can get whiffs when he needs to here and there, but he's also one of those guys who just gets hit so hard so frequently. You know, for every for every amazing front end start that he has, like five innings and and eight Ks, he he has an equally bad one where those two numbers are flipped and it becomes like four to five earned runs. He's he's a uh, he's like. I don't want to say like poor man's Blake Snell because it's like a lazy left-handed whatever comp, but you know what I mean? Where he's like a lot of pitches, a lot of high strikeout rate, a lot of this, but when he gets hit, he gets hit, right? Yeah. 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 Sort of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that, um, that might be a little bit of a stretch. A, a bridge too far. Tyler Anderson. I'm on is- the far side of a PNC bridge and you're on the first bridge. I mean, Tyler Anderson has not had double digit like K like K nine rates since like before the that's COVID nineteen pandemic. That's true. That's true. He used to be He's that not guy. a high strikeout guy. He used to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, for like a little bit. Um, I mean, he's he's a cra- he's a crafty lefty man. He's like left handed like Michaelis. Okay. All right. I'll give you that one. Uh, appreciate Viper bringing the good vibes. Appreciate Numi with the gifted membership. Yo, shout out in the chat who received that gifted member. If you were if you were not previously a member and now you have that sweet sweet uh, member tag beside you, um, thank Numi. Um, all right, cool. Any pickums? Any pickums that we're interested in right now? Nez, um, I shouted out on the morning show that I I like the Tristan McKenzie. Uh, K stuff. I am uh, big on that White Sox lineup being being bad, bad, bad. Uh, outside of the isolated power that Vaughn and and Sheets represents, and maybe a sneaky Grossman here or there leading off. Uh, I want no part of that White Sox lineup, and I think it's a seven plus K day for Tristan McKenzie. That's sharp. Uh, what, what's he? What's what's Tristan's pick on that right now? For is it six even? It's five and a I half. Think it was, nice. Yeah, I think it was five and a half. Yeah, that's a that's a good shout. I mean, yeah, this White Sox lineup, you cannot cannot overstate uh how bad things are over there. Uh I would have to look at some of these pickums, but I know, I mean, we just talked about the Rays. I bet that I'm gonna like, yeah, like Randy, 7.5 fantasy points. I like 
uh, Yandi fantasy points, uh, Paredes. Uh, I would take Paredes 1.5 hits, runs, ribbies. Um, as a that's a very, very minuscule boost, uh, to that. Um, I, I like that for, for him. Uh, let's see, like, what other matchups we like. I wonder if the Rangers have anything up right now. <laughs> the Rangers, yeah, have... Rangers, <laughs> they have stuff getting it. Yeah, getting ahead of the Rangers before the pitching change comes in. I like this one right here. I'm going to build two right now uh, based on the, the suggestions there. Uh, the the ESOC, you get a little spice on the 1.5 hits, runs, and RBIs. Randy Arozarena, I mean, off to kind of a quiet start thus far with the 7.5 fantasy points there. And then Tristan McKenzie is my favorite one on basically any slate I've seen thus far. Right now, I want a bunch of that Tristan McKenzie strikeouts. Uh, and then getting ahead of the Rangers stuff, as Nez said. Let's, let's let's take a look at Rangers there just in general. Before Underdog gets wind of the Frommer uh, scratch. We better hurry. <laughs> um, what do you like? I mean, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> I, one thing that I really like is uh, Wyatt Langford higher one and a half total bases because it's um, got a little bit of a multiplier on there. And he's been like a little unlucky. He's hitting a lot of balls to the warning track uh, mm-hmm. in, in this series against the Astros. Uh, and he's still hitting third. Uh, very much like Wyatt Langford there with a little bit of spice on that one there. Just a just a sprinkle of spice. Yeah, and, I like that. Uh, I mean, all the all the I'm like, looking like, for all these. I obviously like. I'm looking for Evan Carter because Evan Carter's been going real nice recently. 0.5 walks. That's like such like, that's like not a fun one at all. But I bet he, I bet he walks. That this, that's he, that's what this dude does. He just gets on base, right? Gets on base. All right. Let's do those two, and then I'm going to put the Tristan McKenzie one with it because I All right. like that one. Core play, Tristan McKenzie, 5.5Ks yeah. 5 against the White Sox. Man, oh, man. Um, do you th- – I mean, we're not going to do this right now, but like, do you think that you could name like six White Sox in the starting lineup today? Uh, Yeah. 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 Uh, Ben and Tandy, Gavin Sheets, um, Jan Mankata, Robbie Grossman. How many is that so far? Uh, is that four? Uh, Andrew Vaughn. Mm-hmm. Five. You got the top five. Fuck. Yeah, I mean, I might be drawing dead after that one. Uh, the kid who's been playing shortstop recently that, yeah. uh, um, strange name. Oh shit. Yeah. Shoe shoemaker. Yeah. Shoe, shoe make. There you go. Shoe make. Yeah. There we go. Lest we forget the they, other... they got Dominic Fletcher on the team. Dude, Dominic Fletcher, uh, really small. He's like really little. He's like, I think he's like five, seven or something like that playing in the outfield. That's not something you see every, He's their every day. He's center fielder. <laughs> Dominic funny. Fletcher was playing like 100% of his games at like second base two years ago. Right, yeah. What the hell? Are you sure that's Dominic Fletcher, not David Fletcher? Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, Dominic Fletcher's like young guy. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, David they Fletcher. They both got David Fletcher's way better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, much much yeah. better. David Fletcher's just chilling in AAA for uh, Atlanta. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna get traded and sent to the to the big league somewhere. Uh, Nick with the Nick with the we're not gonna do this right now. Then John immediately does it right now. <laughs> That's so <laughs> spot on. Any opportunity for me to show off the the dusty ass empty brain cell knowledge that resides in this cage that nobody needs to hear. I'm going to get there, Nick. I'm going to get there. That's a fact. <laughs> um, Hey, one thing I wanted to talk about with the national championship and everybody was saying, I think it was Carlos was saying in the chat, like, oh, yeah, like it took me till 11 a.m. to realize there was no hoops today. Man, 
I don't know if you saw my tweet yesterday about baseball and like we talked about the Nolan. Um, uh, I can't always fuck. Chanwell. Chanwell. Because there's supposed to be a W in there and there's not a W. Chanwell hit streak and like what they don't do to promote their game. How about the NBA just being sharp as balls to be like, hey, this is the national championship day. There's so much overlap in our NBA fan base and national championship fan base. We're not playing basketball today. As a professional organization, they just are smart enough to make that decision eight months out to know that this is the national championship day and then they're not going to play on this. Like the MLB would never do something like that. Like the amount of times that they overlap unnecessarily with like other sports and stuff, it's just like, what are we doing? Dude, they used to draft during college world series. They used to draft right. players during the college world series. Like, are you dumb? Are you right? Like you're taking stupid? half these kids. Yeah. These kids are yeah. trying to concentrate on the games and now they're like thinking about getting drafted. Like now they're worried about getting drafted nice. and you're diverse. Now you're diverting attention, taking attention away from base. It was just yeah. the dumbest thing ever. And then they stopped doing that. Thankfully, um, baseball can't get out of its own way. No, they can't, man. And it's so sad, man. It's so sad because it's like this game could like, especially with the international roots of this game, this game could have so much hype, right? Like it's, it, it, it can be beautiful. It can be interesting. It doesn't have to be boring and four hours long and drab and, you know, a snooze fest. You could, you, you just need the right personalities around the game. And like, you know, MLB big inning being like the equivalent of red zone is like kind of cool. And, you know, but they don't promote it at all. They don't tell people that this exists and the dudes that they have on there. I mean, bless whatever, like, I could roll out of bed and do a better job than these guys. I know more about baseball than than the fucking guys doing their MLB big inning stuff. And it's like, come on, man. Get some captivating personalities in there. Get like Dallas Braden and, and Carabas in there and let them do big inning. People would love baseball because of that stuff, right? They do a, uh, a thing too. I don't know if you go on like MLB TV after the games are done where they, it's called mm-hmm. like a recap rundown. And yeah. it's like 30 minutes of just like, you know, of, of just showing you what happened today and like in, in, in like nice, like mini games of, you know, of what happened that day. And like, they're awesome. Like I just like, right before I go to bed, like I'll just like put that on and like catch up. Where like I didn't actually get to see with my own eyes. Um, yeah. Like they don't, you don't, people don't even know that that exists. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and this is the problem. This is the narrative is baseball is the boomer sport, right? Like that's, that's the narrative, but you got to shift that. Right. And so much of the shit that they do for like the younger crowd, like comes across to me as like a bunch of like 60 year old white dudes sitting around a table being like, what would the kids like these days? And then they fucking do that opposed to like having boots on the ground with like young social crowds and stuff. Like I I was thinking about this last night and I was having a discussion with my buddies. Look at the resurgence of WWE in the last, you know, year and a half. I didn't care about wrestling for 10 years. And now the resurgence of it with it being all over social because they, they allowed to use their clips, right? So they changed their whole brand and now there's recaps and highlight packages on YouTube and people streaming over top of it. And, and all this sort of fun, like playback style stuff like MLB has to get into that window of that, but they're stuck in you know, 1980, like that's where that's mentally they're stuck. It's crazy, which is kind of nuts. Cause like the MLB TV product is like oh. one of the best streaming experiences yes. I've ever had for like four years running. It is mm-hmm. like shockingly good. How, right? like how good MLB TV is like on a tablet, on my, on my smart TV, on my computer. It is like, I'm like, how, I can't believe that they got it so good. And like, no one really talks about that. And like, they don't even like talk about like how good the product is. It's just like, you want to watch every game? Like, whatever. Like here, here, here's, you know, 150 bucks. But like, it's such a good experience. And like, and it blows me away how, you know, how good it is. And they don't even like, they don't even care. It's so They funny. don't care to promote it. Yeah. It's so much better than NBA TV. Like, and, and especially like five years ago, they were five years ahead on the streaming service stuff comparative to other sports anyways anyways we uh, we need some we need some more people in there um we got the frommer official from sean so i hope you guys got that pick em entry in real quick there that felt good 
little CLV for the fellas. Um, step one cheerleaders on top of the dugouts, Korea style. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Ness. What do you, I what wanted you? to check the lobby, and yeah, all these Rangers are down. Man, we should have like should have smashed those fucking pickums, man. Damn it! They took them all off. They're all. Yeah, they're all you can't you can't click on any of them now. Oh, maybe this maybe this episode should have been behind the paywall. Uh, <laughs> actually, speaking of which, man, we were so effing close on everything on Friday. That was so annoying. Every pick'em was two out of three or three out of five, or, or I mean four out of five. And then we just didn't get that Austin Riley uh extra bases. And then Austin Riley proceeds to smash those fantasy points and extra bases the next three nights. And even when his team smashed that night, oh, I was super annoying, but uh, I digress. Um, Nez, anything else you want to talk about before we move, sorry, move in um, to some drafts and stuff, any uh, lineup stuff that you want to point out? What are you thinking? No, no, I think we are uh, good to go. This, that, that Frommer scratch like really throws a wrench into things because I wasn't drafting Rangers before mm-hmm. that. Um, and I wish I was. Wish I was on top of that news. Yeah. We, My uh, bags are uh, packed elsewhere. <laughs> well, let's go draft and get us some Rangers. Then uh, a couple ones I wanted to hit on real quick. Davis Schneider, He's uh, he's been going okay, and people were in love with him last year and then uh, a tail end of last year and wanted to make him a thing again. This year, but he's hitting five today. Brett Beatty getting a chance to hit in the middle of the order. Kind of interesting uh, there. And then the Twins, man, Jose Miranda's back. So Jose Miranda, the Twins have done nothing offensively all effing year. Thus far, they've been um, very tough to watch. But uh, Manuel Margot leading off. Jeffers in the middle and Jose Miranda, a very different lineup than we are accustomed to seeing from the Twins. But I think they're just grasping at straws. Uh, versus the lefty in Paxton. Not a spot I want to attack, but just some interesting uh, lineup notes in general. Wilson Contreras, who was back and then scratched and then not back and then whatever. Yeah, again, is now officially back and hitting third today. Oh, buddy. That's so funny that you you have no idea. He scratched again. No way. I'm not kidding. Oh, my God. That's why I said that. He scratched him once again. He's been scratched again. This is is this his third straight scratch? Third straight day being in and then out and then in and then out and then in and then out. He's like he's got the Giannis Q tag. Or oh my whatever. god, it's Giannis Q to probable, Q to probable. Holy, I thought silly season was over. I thought silly season <laughs> was over. <laughs> um, some of the other ones you alluded to, Nez, that are going under drafted. Uh, you, I mean, you said the majority of the D backs are going under drafted. But uh, uh, Suarez and Moreno and Grichik and Blaze, to an extent, are all lefty killers. Newman's not in the player pool, but they're kind of going underrepresented at the back end of drafts there. And then, yeah, outside of that, we said that we like the Rays. Mm-hmm. And Trout homered again yesterday. <laughs> four, so so you, you had a funny tweet. We can hop in a draft. Uh, you, you know, Let's wondering like why you don't get why you didn't get the numbers of that other viral tweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they set it up with the forty forty. That forty forty was was. I don't was think funny, that does it. It was a funny. <laughs> setup. It it was a pretty funny setup. It was a funny setup, but like I don't know what it is, man. Like like Twitter just in general. Like I get no run out there. I don't know. I, even when I paid for the blue check mark. I think my Twitter account's been around too long of being mid that they're like this guy deserves no run. That the algorithm has already washed its hands with me. They don't think I can make the 28 year old breakout later in his career. That uh, you know, the Josh Hamilton. They're not giving me that treatment. I mean, we fight uphill because you know we have an audience that we you know that we cultivate and grow during football season. We have an audience during baseball or basketball season, and right. we carry those and we try to make them like enjoy the baseball All content one. too. And they and they don't. <laughs> You know, they, they, we, we try, we try to beat them over the head with it. And, you know, sometimes it just doesn't, it just doesn't take. And so <laughs> the algorithm then sees that and they think no one wants to see this, but in reality, people do want to see it. It's just, they just don't know that they want to see it. You gotta, you gotta get your way mm-hmm. to the for you page. Yeah. Somehow. Somehow. Uh, 
Ronald Acuna has yet to hit a home run this year. Nez, uh, he's hitting 250 despite his team scoring a lot of runs. Are we still clicking his name second overall here? Or should we go the Christian Walker route? Or should we go um, you scrolling for Rangers? Let's do Acuna because we might be able to get a crazy stack back. But uh, Christian Walker is like right there for me. He is without question my my 103 today. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah, people alluding in the chat there. The the WWE versus MLB stuff is like, you know, new leadership under Triple H. Well, that's that's what's led to this kind of resurgence in some respects. But then they also have the benefit of creating the storylines. So, I mean, bringing The Rock back, bringing all these people back. You can't just go ahead and bring uh, Ken Griffey Jr. back uh, Do you for think a couple like- of ABs. Do you think the emergence of AEW kind of forced WWE to step up its game? I know a lot of people like AEW. I think a lot of traditionalists, like hardcore wrestling fans, liked AEW because of the Cody Rhodes story. And now I think the fact that Cody Rhodes went to WWE now has kind of people don't really care about AEW anymore. But I don't know enough about wrestling other than me you know, the documentaries and BS that I've watched and stuff. But like people fell in love with the Cody Rhodes story, I think, the last two years. And I think that's why people have loved wrestling. I, for whatever reason, like the overlap that I get of like wrestling content on my Twitter timeline and like footy content. I have so many soccer tweets on my timeline on like a Saturday really? morning. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't even know like what's going on every once in a while. Like you get like the Josh Norris, like via thread, like about like yeah, there's this yeah. play it always cracks me up. Um, yeah. 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 Once Vince wasn't a part of WWE is when W A E W was screwed. That's a good show. Yeah. When WWE drafts, we could have a little SmackDown versus raw draft on the platform of the people. Uh, we got, uh, uh, underdog just uh did did their first round of airdrops they're doing that million dollar airdrop again oh nice there we go yeah national championship today guys uh million dollar airdrops check, on underdog check the accounts check the transaction history see if you got it there you go perfect I did not. <laughs> damn it um should we do something like austin riley and then flip some stuff around or should we start doing some rangers stuff Oh, buddy, let's get let's get the Rangers going. Let's just like let's just ape in. Let's go. You know, do Seager. Yeah, nice and clean. Seager. Start it off. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, we could do. Like, there's Freeman. I like I was talking do. about too. Or, what do you want? Nets or, or I'm sorry, Braves or uh, Rangers? Rangers. Adolis or Seeger? Or, or I'm sorry, Simeon. I can't. Let's do Adolis. Yeah. I kind of want to do a 2 2 1 here. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I Maybe think that's I fine. Like, There's so many good spots, you know? Like, it seems like a good day to spread around. Yeah. I, I think maybe putting uh, some back end uh, Dusty Coors guys with this would be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, a. Ohanio and Moreno, something like that. Oh, dude, they, they're those guys are not making it to you. Let's see, there goes A. Yeah, that's true. I thought you were talking like that's why I Nolan thinking... Jones, Nolan Jones, and uh, McMahon. Unless you're trying to throw everybody off your scent. Yeah, I'm not really in love with. Man, I think Gallon's good, and of course I know good. he's way way better at home, just in general, let alone at Coors. Um, yeah. I watched a little bit of that game yesterday with uh, the Nolan Jones at bats, and I don't know about Nolan Jones right now. He came around a little bit at Coors. He had a couple singles yesterday. I don't know, man. Something about him at the plate doesn't look right right now. Okay. That's just I mean, I'm not, like, I'm not like a Nolan Jones guy. I kind of like kept that. I because I everybody was like really excited about Nolan Jones. There's a lot of Nolan Jones drafters here. I was underweight Nolan Jones in best ball. Um, yeah, but he's gonna he's gonna like he's gonna break out of this slump though, right? I mean, obviously it's he a has a little bit against yeah. Gallon, but 
I would like to I, I don't know what type of pitcher does better at cores compared to others, but I'm not sure. Um Albies to mix with this, a Tampa Bay mini to mix with this, or four Rangers. Uh, maybe Yandy and Randy. What do you think? Yep, sure. Yandy and Randy. Yandy and Randy. <laughs> Sound like some trailer park boys. <laughs> that see that that's fun. That I really like. Yeah, me too. And I mean, you can just today is pretty easy to draft a volume because like you don't have to like be tethered too too much as, as far as like who you're stacking. Like in days past, it, 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 I mean, it's fun, but it, it has felt like much more work in in past slates compared to today where we have just like the chalk is just like right there for you like you know damn well who is like the best play today Mm -hmm. yeah it's true some interesting (laughs) chip alluding to the fact that hand up for being the the wrong bull yeah i mean he's hitting 400 at coors over the weekend their first series back at home we haven't had coors we haven't had uh coors nolan yet so that, that, that's a fair point. Uh, let's take Randy here. We got the righties at the top of the lineup there. We got a righty and a lefty masher from the Rangers. And then we got a dole or we got, um, we got Acuna hitting his first home run of the season. Tonight. Not a bad team. Not bad. <laughs> Not too shabby. No asking. Uh, interesting question. We went into it a little bit there on the paywall stream there, just about some of the stacks that work and stacks that haven't been in whatever do you like the onslaught slacks more or less with these mega chalk slates so these are often the coors ones or astros in a good spot um braves in a good spot and dodgers in a good spot lends themselves to really condensed ownership so in those type of slates nez do you prefer onslaught stacking the contrarian stuff or do you prefer onslaught stacking in general what do you think i think on a day like today i'm less likely to onslaught okay um, with with like mega chalk but uh you know maybe you do it with the twins like maybe the twin you know like i think doing it with a non-chalky team on slotting a non-chalky team it's really hard to do because it's like you you see the names that you're passing up on and it feels really bad but mm-hmm. in the event that you know maybe the rockies go off or the twins go off like i mentioned or the giants i, I mentioned the giants um in in my my post like you know they're they're facing trevor williams like it's, it's Trevor Williams. I know they're in they're in San Francisco, but like they can get to him. Um, yeah, if you're we gonna licking our lips yeah. to get to Pirates in a rainstorm mm-hmm. uh, earlier this week right. uh, against Trevor Williams. Right. So I think it's if you're gonna onslaught, I would probably do it with the team that feels that feels bad because <laughs> okay. no one's do no one's gonna you're gonna you're gonna have very little competition. You're gonna have competition because there's people out here that onslaught every single team because um, they can, um, but. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Um, one guy we haven't talked about yet. This is it, it's kind of crazy. You just get like Luis Castillo in the last round on yeah. a day like today. Um, but one guy we didn't talk about yet was uh Jose Brio. Um, you know, been going pretty nice to to start the the season here. Uh obviously pitching in Toronto is is better than it once was there. And the Mariners have a bunch of right-handed bats and a bunch of bats that strike out a lot uh can you get to uh jose barrios today oh my gosh yeah okay totally totally yes um not a lot going on in the mariners lineup that scares me um Mm -hmm. and they and they've been striking out so uh yeah love love barrios today like it's just like why would i why would i take blake snell in the first round when right like there's for him to separate he can but first start back, like I'm gonna call it less than likely. Yeah. I, I think to have a pitcher separate, especially on a slate like this when it's so effing loaded with right. with bats, I mean, you would literally have to have 22, 24 points like that. And for just sake of argument, like Ronel Blanco threw a no hitter of nine innings of baseball, granted not a crazy strikeout rate guy, and didn't even get to twenty. You know, like it's just that's that's what we're dealing with here. I think we had a 22.1 from. Oh, shoot. 
It was like two days ago. Well, Ryan Pepio just had a yeah Pepio yesterday. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Pepio had I twenty something there. at Coors. Yeah, twenty something at Coors with eleven strikeouts. Like just tip your hat and move on. Like took a bath yesterday because of that. Yeah, he separated. Like he yeah. was someone you had to have. Mm -hmm. Wasn't me. Yeah, but a lot easier to separate on a four game slate like that too comparative to a large slate like this with a bunch of good hitting spots. Yep. hundred percent. Um, yeah. so no Jonathan India, he got scratched officially. Shit, I should. That's super annoying. I had quite a bit of India. Uh, yeah. So did I, is that live already? That contest, <laughs> it, 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 that came in a minute after the contest, uh, went live. So that's, you're kind of well, India doesn't have the out tag yet. Shit. Okay, we gotta think through this on the fly here. Which game starts first? Well, first uh, just queue up Christian Walker. Okay, we're good. Yeah, okay. So it's White Sox and Cleveland that starts first. Yeah, no swaps are taking place right now because that news came in um yeah, he doesn't even a have minute that after lock, yeah. so you do have time. Okay. Who is the new leadoff hitter? Fairchild. New... So Fairchild moved to the top. That means he's less likely to get pinch hit for, in my estimation, because I had him penciled in for like two point five abs. Yeah, I think that they don't they, they don't even have anybody to pinch hit for. Uh, you're on the clock. Uh, Griel as a little stacking partner for yep. Walker, or Walker as a one off. And or Jordan, Uriel. but I, I like Uriel. Okay, who's pitching for the Rangers today? Uh, Heaney, lefty lefty against Jordan. Not that it really matters for Jordan, but because Heaney's not making it out of the fourth, you know, yeah. like or he's he's like he's pitching twelve ounce twelve outs at most. Yeah, I got you there. Um, okay, let's see. here. Did you see the ending to the Pirates game? Sorry, I just got like a note yes. on my phone. The 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 sweet sliding uh, defensive stop by Gunnar Henderson tagged the bag and threw it away. Yeah, because he had big fat rowdy Tellez in his way, so he could... <laughs> <laughs> I had to try to throw around him and he threw a wild ball. Oh, that's great! Big beefy baseball boy, baby. Got a. There we it. go, Mackenzie K on the first AB. Okay. That one's gonna print today, guys. Don't you worry. Whoa. Okay, Whoa. so um mm, all right, I'm swapping to Tyler Stevenson. There you go. There's your swap. Love it. I um un I, I forgot that I was waiting in a big fly, so I am drafting that. Sorry. Oh, there you go. Guys. <laughs> Luckily I got Cattell Marte, not a bad little start, but oopsie daisy. <laughs> um, it's interesting. Are the Braves drawing dead because of the Spencer Strider stuff? No. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts yeah, big it time, hurts. but they're not. They're not drawing dead. No. Yeah, I think the scarier part of the equation is the how bad Freed has been. And the fact that, um, what should we do here, Ness? Uh, you want to do Gino? Let's see, Rangers. <laughs> Let's get ahead of it. All right. Seeger Simeon. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, dude. The, um, oh, fuck me. Sorry. The um. You, you focus mobile. on the big fly, big dog. <sighs> Well, the, the freaking the app didn't tell me I was on the clock. <laughs> I don't know if what's going on, if we're having problems again, but I hope not. Yeah, sorry for cussing. Yes. <laughs> I love that people say things to you when you cuss, but nobody says anything for me because they don't expect they don't they don't expect better from me. They expect better from you, Nez. When I cuss, it's just like, yo, that's just like John being like a shitty beer league hockey player. When Nez cusses, it's like, God damn it, Nez. 
didn't you go to church today? Come on, man. What are you doing? You don't think people expect me to throw out a couple couple cuss words, a couple bad words? <laughs> Sorry for cussing. Uh, yeah, it's Randall Gritchick Revenge Game. You know it, baby. Bad language unsubscribed. There you go. Yeah, there's probably people with kids in the car. We label these. When I upload these pods, I label them as explicit. That's true. Newbie's right. I am uncultured on this uh, this internet vernacular of... Uh, yeah, man. We got to get you on yeah. sketch. <laughs> it's just a hilarious kid. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Even like that dude that Underdog signed to do that, like, what was his Sketch name? Sketch is blowing up right now, though. Mantis. Like, <laughs> dude, like the Phillies celebration when they hit doubles now is like a sketch joke like a, he's a, he's a streamer he, he streams madden but he's like yeah. he's always like calling audibles like tuesday tuesday and like that's <laughs> what they do now when they hit a double they do the sketch tuesday tuesday i um, don't know this i don't know this generation man. i don't get it i don't understand this generation yet. these guys are as old as you john like yeah, <laughs> this is you like like um... everybody is like you need to get on I'm just trying to get you hit, man. Sketch is hilarious. <laughs> and he's going mainstream. And now everybody's like doing like the what's up, brother? Like you see it all the time now. All the time. And I'm so happy for him because he's just this like goofy ass kid from Houston. And okay. uh, and he's like, he's absolutely blowing up. Like his he's he's <laughs> he was making good money from streaming. Uh yeah. he, his life is like going to change. And it's just like it's and, and he's just such an awesome kid. So it, it, it's awesome. I'm so out of date with like the, that. I mean, we joked before we started the show and stuff like that. Like you guys can go back and like try and find me on the internet. Like I've lived on the internet for like 15 years playing poker. Like, you know, there's no joke. I've been on the internet forever. i just have no digital footprint or no, like even before we started street, like I didn't even you know. Really on like, the internet. Like you were on I the wasn't, internet, but like you were like, you were secluded. You were. Yeah. I wasn't like an active participant in whatever. So I, you know, all this stuff is so foreign to me. Like the filming yourself to even with the first time we started doing these shows, I, I, you know, we used to talk about it all the time. I was like, this is so fucking weird, man. Like <laughs> To do a show. Yeah. Like, just in general. I found it like, uh, do you want Evan Carter? Or do you want Wyatt Langford? No, Wyatt. Okay. Wyatt's going off like one of these one of these games, obviously, but like he's hitting the ball like he's hitting the ball really well. Um, yeah, you want we right. we want to we want to be early on the Wyatt stuff. Um, GA got that coveted Dodger stack that you were alluding to. How it's like available today and, and never completely torched it. Yeah, and never been available before. And then he went for the Toronto, the Contrarian Toronto stack to go alongside it. Uh, Luis Castillo. Or Jose Barrio or Morton. Uh, I do. Well, okay. It just happened. Take your boy. I've been doing a lot of Barrios. I go back and forth between Barrios and uh, uh, Castillo, but okay. Uh, I, I really like uh, I really like Barrios today. Okay. I don't know, like what I need. I've been like holding off on like buying any projections, so like I don't know like what what the computers are telling people, but I do oh. know that um that playing from the heart right now. Dude, I love it. It's it's so much it's it's so much better. Um, and but I know but I know that um the Pick'em Lobby uh has like all these guys like very much the same as their fantasy point projection goes. So okay, there's like there's it. that little little gut check. Unable to find the slate. Yeah, I won't act like I'm 55. Okay, I I, I know I like joke about being like a boomer and shit like this, but like yeah, I just I don't know. Like I like. You know, I watched some stuff on Twitch and stuff, but I only ever watched like the games that I like. I don't you know? watch. I don't go on to Twitch and watch streamers. Let me just like, oh, okay. I mean, no, so no, dis- you... no disrespect if that's your thing. Because he'll like my TikTok algo knows that like oh, Nez, AJ guy, would love it. like to see a sketch clip. And uh, I've gone through all of them. Like I've seen all of them now. So like I don't get like any new ones. If I see them now, I just like scroll past it because I've already seen like a compilation of like him just like being funny but um he's just, he's just a funny ass dude all right and i don't scroll um, on tiktok a lot either but when i do it's, it's 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 sketch clips the infinite scroll all right uh let's rip one more of those nez and then uh maybe we can do i want to do the big fly on stream it, 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 i don't uh i don't know if it'll fill maybe you can maybe do a frozen okay. rope 
I don't think I'm going to play Frozen Rope today. That's oh, structure. Dude, it's, the it, it's a rope fun, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun idea. It's a fun concept. I think, okay, let's talk about it. What is the playing strategy that differs for you in the Frozen Rope than the normal contest when it's literally just five places paid? I mean, I don't really change my style too much. Okay. I probably should, but like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think it's all, I think it's just like a very fun way to like get action down yep. and, and like have a chance to win a thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, if I was to give, if, if I was like coaching and they were like, Hey, I want to do the, I want to do, um, you know, this, this like, you know, this contest, what, how should I differ? I would be okay with like getting contrarian because like, you're going to like everybody in these main contests, especially now that it's a 144 max, there's going to be a little bit of everything going on mm -hmm. by the whales in the, um, in, in the frozen rope. Very few people are going to be getting like contrarian, you know, like you're not going to see right. like the Gilof drafters, of yesterday really in a contest True, yeah. like that where it's going to be way way more condensed around the chalk so like for me i'd probably like you know i've been i've been pretty chalky in my three entries thus far because okay. i've been able to get the diamond backs that i want mm -hmm. but like that's probably where like i would maybe do some giants okay all right i respect it uh, let's do the Christian Walker thing. Start a little chalky again, uh, where we think he should be, you know, mm -hmm. 102, 103. And then, uh, maybe we could pair him with some different stuff. Maybe we could do, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll navigate these waters as they come to us. I love like a, a Suarez and, um, and Moreno pairing. Cause it's four, five, six in the order. Um, all guys I yeah. can just mash. I mean, this is a I night, like this is such a nightmare lineup. <laughs> It is, man. It's a great lineup. Yeah, I was definitely underrating this team uh, during Dinger season, and I tried to pivot as hard as I could uh, before, you know, I maxed with, you know, the Eugenio, uh, especially him with his price. He was like 170 in, in the mm -hmm. Dinger, and I'm like, man, this lineup's actually good, and I actually used to really like Eugenio. I used to love it. Right, yeah. And I'm like, why am I not drafting this guy? Yeah, even could tell Marte to an extent where it was just like we we were all over him last year and he was yeah. like one of my, my guys in quotations last year, but like the price tag had just moved up and it was like, uh, you know, we could find other infield options late. And then it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, never mind. He's really effing good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe just take the guy that scores a lot. Um. Okay, let's pass on Guriel then and let's take a Eugenio and do like this like four, five, six combo. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like plenty that. of outfielders for us. Yeah, uh, this is a good question here, Numi. If we can remove the out tag on Bubba Thompson, I'm sure that's coming before the next swap window because he's been added to the lineup. He's hitting nine, so if people Ooh. want a contrarian swap off of India, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Yon <Yeah. laughs> Moncada yeah. with a quick seven for for uh, folks in here i'm surprised so many people have yon moncada in the daytime diamond Jeez, this game these games are getting tough man we got how many people are on yon moncada today 66 folks drafted 66 yon people had yon moncada i mean that like that surprises me when you only have 25 bullets and you're know, like give me yon moncada against mckenzie with a bad lineup yeah. And like a lot of these teams at the top have him versus McKenzie too. <laughs> well, I mean, the ones with nine points, right? Like yeah. those ones you can just like. Sorry, what did he have? He had a, he had a, a single, a, and, a a single and a steal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Former top prospect, Joe Moncada. You'll have to remind me. I lost lots of money on him. Don't worry, Nez. You going Moreno if we, if Johnny Bags lets us have it? Yeah, we'll go Moreno here. We'll stick to our guns, and then we can either do two contrarian one-off uh, home run pieces in the outfield that we like, or we can do a little mini stack, maybe like, 
I don't want to go back to the Rangers well yet again, but we could do. I mean, I Trout know. will might likely be there. Yeah, we could do like a, a Trout, a Rosarena, or we could do um, who, who, who else are some well, outfielders? We, we didn't like really to... talk about the, the Padres and Cubs. That's a seven and a half run total. Um, mm, yeah, just. But like two, like Assad like doesn't really move me. Like he's fine. Um, and I know the Padres are off to a slow start. And the Cubs offense is really good. Um, and I mean, yeah, we like you Darvish, but. No one's really getting there, and I mean, I know that the to- the run total is what it is, but I just kind of I find that kind of surprising. I don't know. I respect it, like I'm respecting it. I'm not doing much much different there, but just kind of throwing it out there. Yeah, I feel that. Um, we could do like, I I guess he would just do like belly and. I guess. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, yeah. What do you think? One off trout or holy crap, Kyle Tucker still here? Yeah, let's do trout. Okay. You know, you know, you don't have to twist my arm to do trout. I just saw. Um, yeah, we could have done this one too. Conforto Soler. That, that, mm-hmm. That's a good one too. Um, the the Angels did make a shift in their lineup. I know everybody is holding their breath for the um, uh, Anthony Rendon. One, but uh-huh. uh, Miguel Sano, long lost Miguel Sano has been ripping the baseball. And I watched a little bit of that game yesterday, and he he lined out I think twice. He he actually pitched as well. He yeah. pitched yesterday too. Um, yeah, so big day for, for Miguel Sano, but it didn't materialize in fantasy points. But they flipped him and Drury in the lineup today. So uh, if you want to do a little contrarian, uh, Trout Ward and. Um, yeah, you do like Trout, Ward, and Sano almost. Like, there's a lot of pop in that threesome. Um, granted, you know, Eflin's a tough, tough at bat for all of them. But, uh, yeah. I wonder what his new weight is because he's slimmed down quite a bit. Fangraph still has him at 272. I don't think he's 272 anymore, do you? No, I don't think so either. I think he's, I think he's come down a decent amount. Wow, Zach um, Allen made it all the way back. Yeah, would you like to add Gallon to this? I mean, normally not, but like, hey, this is you're not gonna. There's not gonna be a lot of Gallon with the with these players because he's typically going early. Okay, yeah, go ahead and click that. We got you know, <laughs> whatever, fifteen spots at ADP to pair him with. If you're gonna pair him with it, you may as well pair it with the Arizona Bats because they're gonna carry you to to that win bonus. Uh, little bit of positive correlation there i got an idea for our our last outfielder sure you know what just go ahead and fuck this team up however you want now that we got this crazy adp volume yeah uh i got i got a good one for us it's um it's a little correlation boost um with uh you know knew me at the game (laughs) hey oscar (laughs) buxton (laughs) Byron Buxton. You don't think you don't think just, okay, picture this. It's been a minute. Picture <laughs> this. It's the fifth inning. You get yeah. a video sent to our group DM on Discord before we even get the notification on MLB at bat that Buck has hit a home run. And it's a video of Numi screaming his fucking head off. Let's go, yeah. Buck! Let's go, Buck! Because yeah, Buck just hit a grand slam off of James Paxton to break uh, the zero zero tie. Let's go. I hate it so much. <laughs> Thank you for lighting the seven dollars on fire for me, Ned. Oh man, <laughs> we had You're such so a beautiful welcome. team. You're so <laughs> welcome. Uh, it, it's low key encouraging that uh, Buck's been playing the outfield. He did not play a single game in center field last year, and uh, people are excited to see him and Michael A. Taylor in the outfield together. And then we just never saw it, you know, like, uh, and we're never going to see it because now he's a pirate. But uh, yeah, just. Nice to it see really good back sign. in the outfield. Oh, yeah. dude, these um, yeah, these mobile notifications are bunk. I need to see if there's a uh, an update. An update. Right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, Real I just went right through now. it. I, an entire frozen rope just uh just got drafted. <laughs> oh damn. That's it's all right. It's a good team. GM GM to the DFS king. Um, all right, Nez. 
I was going to let you out of here. I was going to be like, yo, let's call it right now. I think we owe it to the people. I think we owe the model to be dust off for a quick one. All right, let's go. Let's dust off the model. Give the people the Monday puck drop meta that they need. I have no idea how many games are on the slate. Oh, three person drafts. Perfect. Here we go. Oh, this is going to be easy, man, because it's just. It's... Oh, Chip's already in here. Hands are on the slate. All right. Uh, oh, Nuckies are on the slate. They lost uh, 6 3, I think. They were down four Cobb in the blink of an eye the other night to the Golden Knights of uh, Viva Las Vegas. The Nuckies are a fake wagon. Uh, my first initial reaction here, Nez, is I do not see many wingers on this on the top of this slate. No, you don't. No, you don't. No. And um, yeah, we're, we're gonna have to get out ahead of that. I think uh, Sid is on a terrier. Aren't the Penguins just like terrible though? Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's check in on. Um... I'm pretty sure the Penguins are ass. Yeah, they I have, think they're you know Kyle Dubas? No. I oh, I thought you were a puck guy. No. I'm mind. naming front office members you've never heard of? Yes. He's like a young cat, but he's like the GM for the Pirates. Uh, I'm pretty sure he is like the definition of fake sharp, is my oh, understanding. Interesting. That's what I've been well, they told. Did, they did go out in, uh, and you know, get Carlson and do that sort of stuff. And that might be low key fake sharp. Yeah. Cause I thought that move was going to be, I thought that was a good move. Cause I knew that name. It's like, Oh, nice. Yeah. Especially after a big year last year. All right. So we got Matthews and then the Tandy goes, we could do Elias better I think we got to take William Nylander. Cause I think wings get, get thin. Yeah. We need Nylander. Okay, let's take Nylander and then and take Marner with it. Or is that too? You know, you want to go sit the kid with it? that? No, no, no. I'm out on Sid the kid today. I've 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 made the decision that Sid the kid is not going to play a good game. No, today. Eichel. Let's go, Marner. Eichel. Right, let's go, Marner. Let's go, Marner. Let's go, Marner. You want Marner? Okay. Double the wings. You called it. Yeah. I feel I feel like it's kind of thin at, at, at the wing position today. Yeah, you might be on to something there. Um, yeah, Pittsburgh basically has no shot at a playoff spot here. They're making a push. That's what though. I'm seeing. But they're making a push. I see. Well, I guess that's just the division leaders. Maybe they can. So the division quoting. leaders, the division leaders are okay. So I guess it'd be the Wings, the Islanders, and the Penguins are all separated by like one or two games, and they're pushing for the wild cards. Okay, yeah, they definitely have a chance. Okay, cool. Wow. Um, Eichel comes back to us. Ooh. But what about John John Tavares? Is he just not on the same PP as those guys? We could take both. Take both. Fuck it. Take both. Why not? I feel like we got to scroll somewhere, though. All right, we got to scroll for... We got to scroll for these last ones. One okay. of them's Tendy, so we can't really scroll. <laughs> this is an absolute scroll slate for, uh, for Puck with only two games on it. So what tendy are we taking? That's a great question. Okay, I'm seeing Matthews is playing with Domi and Bertuzzi. And then we're seeing Tavares with Marner and Bobby McMahon. And then Nylander is on the third line. Interesting. So that's according to Daily Faceoff. They're they're mixing things up on us. Ooh. All right. Let's let's scroll. Let's take Quinn Hughes. I gotta I gotta end this one with Quinn Hughes. I love. We Quinn need a Hughes. D man. He's gonna wheel. He's gonna stop it around. 
stop it around. Stop it around, boys. Um, and then it feels like we should take the the Vegas Tandy. Uh, what's his name? Um, shoot. Logan Thompson. Logan Thompson? I need a French Canadian in the net, man. Is that the best we can do? I think that's the best we can do without being like crazy correlated against ourselves. All right. Logan Thompson, this guy. This guy doesn't know a lick of French. No. That's not going to play well. No. Everyone it's knows every gonna... tendy needs a little needs to know a little French. Oh. Oh. Go Canes. We got a Canes one in here. Okay, so they're point back of the wild card. Yeah, Flyers are choking it. There we go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Ends making there, a jar. Dude, we got there, there's some people in here that are that were onslaughting the the White Sox today. Man, I'm just you know the rich get richer for uh, dog bowl champion Couric. Let me tell you, he's got he's got a Dommy Fletcher and uh, Moncada team at the top there to start. Rich get richer. I would, I would just never in a million years, like no. <laughs> the two hole and the sixth hole, neither of them with good pop. He's got like, it's, a, it's an odd slot, so he's got like everything. oh it's oh he's got all five oh okay that's yeah. fine if he's got like Gavin Sheets in there and he's got like that makes sense I'm fine with that yeah that's different yeah if you got the pop all right guys let's tie a bow on it there Nez um everybody enjoy the Natty Championship tonight everybody join uh, enjoy the baseball slates we got that daytime diamond going right now. We got a bunch more drafts to fill this one. It looks like the Rangers are going to remain uh, cheeky and undervalued for a little bit here. Um, we got some good Coors value as well, I think. Uh, maybe that cheeky raise, uh, as we alluded to, as well. Uh, pretty fun baseball slate tonight. And then we will be back tomorrow. Maybe uh, a little more baseball, a little more, maybe a little hoops. Hoops is a really nice slate. Tomorrow might get us prepped for uh, T-Box on Wednesday there. For the 100 days smoke free, aka 100K rake free on the platform of the people in T Box's honor on Wednesday. And then, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the week that is. I, I reached out to um, Matt Moody and I'll reach out to DJ Sabes as well there. Hopefully, get something Zamboni related before the playoffs start next week. And then maybe we can sneak in something golf related. We got the Masters starting on Thursday there. So people are going to be drafting the Albatross all week here. Maybe we should sneak something like that in as well. Yeah. I need to watch some, uh, Rick run good content and, uh, some ETR content that I can siphon off and then regurgitate for the people. <laughs> Perfect. Oh man. Sounds great. Uh, any parting words, Ness? No, I'll see you in the lobbies. And uh, like John said, 100K on Wednesday. But lest we forget, 100K tomorrow for Tuesday as well. Back-to-back -back 100K slates for NBA. Uh, fired up, man. That's uh, no. that's going to be fun. Going to be awesome. Uh, all right. We will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Best of luck tonight. Everybody's favorite time of the show. The MP. I'm going to look clips in my heart.